Hey, welcome back everyone. It's Kareem here today. We're talking about five death traps that keep contractors stuck. I'm going to read from my list here. Number one, not following up. Simple, easy, basic to do, but apparently not a whole lot of people do it. Okay, so a lot of people, like what they'll do is they'll try to get somebody who's, without giving them any prior training or no prior knowledge or anything to actually fill the gap in their knowledge, They'll just get the accountant to send emails and follow-up sequences and things like that. No, get them training, train them yourself, get them copywriting, or just hire a professional third party and get it done that way. That would probably be better than you just doing it and having a fruitless effort. Now, having a fruitless effort and then tweaking it as you go forward, like that's actually pretty good. You can start getting some feedback, send the first thousand emails then tweak from there change one thing send another thousand tweak from there send another thousand that works that's a good long-term plan but again not following up is a big big pitfall that a lot of business owners in the contract and construction space have they just don't follow up when it comes to leads when it comes to appointments when it comes to you name it next up number four here next we have no sales process how many times have I asked a business owner or contractor, hey, what's your sales process? And then they go on this long meandering stream of consciousness. Well, I'm not even sure what that means, but you know what it is, you know what it is when you hear it. It's somebody that just goes on and on and in an indirect manner without actually directly answering the question. And so if you ask somebody what their sales process is and they do not immediately go into the sales process, similar to if you were to ask somebody, hey, is it raining outside? If they should just come from outside, hey, is it was it raining outside? And they don't just give you an immediate answer. They're not sure what to say. They're trying to make it up as they go, which is to say they don't actually have a sales process. Having no sales process is one of the worst things possible because that means that everybody that you put yourself in front of, especially you know, excuse me, especially if you're like a super generalist, like you do everything, you do roofing, you do remodels, you do renovations, you might do mold remediation or something like that. You do additions, you do, if you're doing all these different things, and then for each one of those jobs, every time somebody is in front of you, you're telling them something different. It's just you, how you feel in the moment. And there's a few things there. One is like, you wouldn't be able to train a team to be able to do that. Even if you did get somebody that was good at sales to go out and do these estimations and what have you, like they wouldn't have a pre-built script and they wouldn't know, they wouldn't have a pre-built script and they wouldn't be able to just follow in your stead and get this done themselves. Have a sales process, have some scripts and say it all the time, every time, have it memorized. You're going to memorize it by just doing it consistently anyway. Lack of focus. The old saying, if you chase two rabbits, you will lose them both. Yes, lack of focus. How many times have you seen like a contractor say, okay, I want to run this campaign. I'm going to run this campaign with my marketing budget. We're going to set a thousand dollar a month budget and we're going to run ads for roofing, um, additions, ADUs. We're going to run it for um, kitchen remodels. We're going to also run it for siding and pressure washing of the roof while we're at it we're going to throw pick one thing do the promotion on that and that's how you're going to actually gain momentum pick one thing and stick to it being scatterbrained and all over the place when it comes to this sort of thing when we're talking about spending marketing dollars when we're talking about our marketing budget no no that's a big no no have a se a separate marketing budget for each of those things if you're going to do it otherwise don't do it at all Next, we have not answer on the phone. I mean, there's not really, there's not really much to say about this. This speaks for itself. Ask any customer, um, potential customer, really any potential client. You ask anybody, hey, what's a big complaint that you have with attempting to get hold of a contractor, subcontractor, you name it. They get to bring up one of the first things. These guys don't answer the phone. We get it. You're out at the job site. Yada yada yada. But honestly, nobody wants to hear those excuses. Is either you get somebody to do it, or you have some sort of automated system like AI that actually handles it for you. Either way, there's a solution to the problem. And finally, last but not least, we have not being serious. Not being serious about brand building. Not being serious about brand building is like. 
the unforgivable sin when it comes to building a business generally, when it comes to building a contract or business specifically. If you're out here doing construction and nobody recognizes you, you've been in business for 10 years and everybody draws a blank or it's loading in their brain, like who? You're who again? You know what I mean? Like you're Bob the Builder's Inc. or what have you. And everybody draws a blank. Well, you know, you can always fall back on. It's like, yeah, well, we get a lot of referrals and things like that. One of the problems with that is that that means this entire time, however you've been getting leads, however you've been getting people in through the front door, you haven't made an active effort to have them recognize your brand. Your brand, um, to use a Warren Buffett quote, the brand is what justifies, a paraphrase, a Warren Buffett paraphrase, your brand is what justifies your higher price. So what's the difference between a commodity, which is whatever your product or service is, like roofing is a commodity because there's a lot of people doing it. What separates the guy who can charge whatever the insurance company flicks off the table and the guy who can charge darn near whatever the heck they want for the premium service is their brand. Their brand, their brand, their brand. Once you have a brand, if you have a brand, if you build your brand, what you can then do is charge above the commodity price, right? Like a lot of brands make luxury products, but a lot of brands are LVMH and they charge exorbitant prices for the same stuff. You know, of course, yeah, we get it. They're building it with hand-selected materials and they play violin to the cows before they make leather out of them. Yeah, we get all of that good stuff. But really, the difference between the premium and the commodity is branding all the time, every time. You have a brand, you can charge the upper echelons in your niche for whatever, you name it. And with that, that's it. Those are the five deathly, deathly, deathly things that get in the way. That's it for today. Those are the five debt traps that keep contractors down. That's it. It's Kareem. See you tomorrow.